So did you hear what Dana Brown said about Kyle Tucker? Uh, yeah, he thinks he's going to be back. He's, he's acting like... He, no, it's it's a a priority. It was is, a proclamation. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's going to sign up to a uh, long-term deal. Be careful now. Is Yeah, Dana. You I better would, know something that, that we don't know. Well, have Dana you talked is to, the guy who would sign him. I know, course. but have you talked to... Have you talked have to, talked to, to Kyle about this? Tucker's agent and Jim Crane about this? Have you, really, have you? Does Jim Crane know you said this out loud with your mouth on a radio show? <laughs> Dana, what you doing with that mouth, though? Apparently getting everyone happy about Kyle Tucker being yeah, back. Yeah. Because when I saw that, I'm like, damn, that's a strong that proclamation a to make. strong po- proclamation. I really don't think that there's any <sighs> chance. Did you? And I, I love Kyle Tucker. When he hit the Grand Slam, he just goes back to the dugout. It's like, there's not like, he doesn't have that whole, it doesn't look like there's highs and lows for him, if you want to know the truth. It really doesn't look like, he just went back to the dugout, yeah, hey everybody. It wasn't, he didn't even really smile. And then he hit the home run last night, back-to-back homers, Grand Slam, two-run homers. And he was just like going back to the dugout, you know. Yeah, act like, like you've just, been there. That, He's that, been this there. Is, this is what I do. He's been there. This is what I do. Mm-hmm. I, but that Dana Brown is proclaiming, oh, no, we're going to sign Kyle Tucker. I mean, it made me feel good. That, and there's you still got a couple of years to go. But I'm thinking, what if he signs them? They buy out like a year of. Well, free agency. Kyle Tucker, like, hey, that doesn't count. Kyle Tucker can't be all that pleased with him since they beat him in arbitration. He wanted seven and a half. They said five, and the arbiter decided five was the right number. And when you when you win an arbitration case, and it, you know, especially when it's you have to give negative things about the player, and the player knows that you're talking negatively about him. And no, we he shouldn't be seven and a half million. He should be five because this, 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 and this. Uh, that's not always great for when you're going to negotiate long-term deals for him. But may I don't know. Maybe Dana Brown. Maybe they're getting close. Maybe they're they are on the same page. I mean, that'd be great news. Yes. If, if if it happens this early in advance, then that means that. I mean, basically, it would be about buying out Tucker's next two years, but it'd have to be a substantial number. I mean, you would have to you'd have to buy that out at the tune of of probably. Almost the full amount, like thirty-five million. You know I what's think. surprising is that that they did beat him. Although five was probably a closer number to Kyle Tucker, but when you Shohei Itani got thirty million in arbitration, <laughs> are you kidding me? Shohei Itani, that's that the biggest non. You know where they didn't have to pay a guy thirty million dollars. <laughs> they gave him. I don't know what Kyle Tucker's worth next year, but it, what if you negotiate a deal with him now, he, it will be substantially more than he will make in arbitration. Oh yeah, it will be. Yeah, and uh, which is good for Kyle Tucker. I mean, you add that onto the years. Yes. If it's if it's going to be twenty mil, you know, if it's going to be fifteen million more than you make an arbitration times two years, thirty million more, then you amortize that over, you know, over an eight year contract. Then you know you're talking about an extra three and a half million dollars per year, but. That's why I think you'd almost have to get to like thirty-five and a half million. You'd have to be at thirty-five million, and then you're adding three. You know, it turns into basically a thirty-eight, thirty-nine million dollar a year contract, which is you know. And well, then you're going to have Jordan like, he ain't hey, be th- thirty-eight, thirty-nine. What are you talking about? He ain't getting no. They ain't going to do no deal well, like that. That's what it's going to take. No, well, I don't know what Dana Brown's thinking. Have you seen Kyle Tucker lately? Yeah, he have you seen Kyle Tucker play baseball in the last three listen, years? Thirty is the number for guys right now. You're going up to 38, 39? Because his why do you think in three years? Yes, no. His agent knows what the number is going to be. First of all, Otani is going to get Ohtani, a number. Otani, you can't go by Otani. I know you can't, but Otani, you're going to get a number. Yeah. You're still going to get a number. You'll say, okay, the pitch. We believe the pitching number is this, and the hitting number is yeah. this. Yeah. I. You know. Well, listen. Anthony Davis got $62 million a year. $62 million a year. It's getting into ridiculousness. Maybe in two years, which it's going to be in two years. There's no way Kyle Tucker makes 38 average. No way. No way. 38 or 39. There's no way. He can't. I'm saying buying him out at 35. But, But what you're doing basically is adding an additional, because of the buyout years, where he you're paying him so much more than he would have made, you're basically 
you know, it's basically like adding an extra three and a half million onto his contract well, over eight years. That's where I'm getting a 38, 39. Well, I, well, but 35 is my number for him. But you have to do it early. Well, I mean, why would his agent I, do I a deal? I don't think any of Honestly, them. why would his agent do a deal? But he ain't getting 35 on the open Well, then market you ain't anymore. getting no Kyle Tucker. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe it's going to happen anyway, but Dana Brown does. Christian Javier had a ton of pitches. They didn't have a single inning under 20 pitches, I don't believe. Um, but... He was, I was, I think one inning he did, but I was really happy to see Dusty leave him out there. And I'll tell you why. Dusty wanted to get him a win. Do you know that this is the first, did you get to hear the broadcast at all? I did not. Okay. <clears throat> when's the last, before yesterday, when's the last time that Christian Javier had a decision, a decision in the game? Uh, The last time Christian Javier had a decision, I don't, know, I don't have any idea. Is this could this possibly be right on the broadcast? They said June third. It has to be July third, right? Wow, that's a long time. Well, you can. That's easy. It has to be well, July third. Easy to find but out. He, he has had twenty one or twenty two starts, and he's got nine. It's really easy to find out. Yeah. It, all you have to do is go to his game log and see the last time he won a game. Last time he won a game or had the decision was June third. Yep. That's that's the most stunning thing. That's been no 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 no. He had a decision on the last time he won a game. Got a win. 3rd. Had a decision. And of he a had win. a decision. He's he only had, had a loss on but that's uh, July twenty second. But that's the only time he's had a decision. He was sitting seven and one a long time ago. Yeah, Christian Javier was. This is his first win since June third. Over two months, Christian Javier has pitched without a win, and and. Dusty wanted him to get a win. Christian Javier started the inning with over with high eight. He was like 88 pitches to start the 88 or 89 to start the inning. And I'm like, man, Dusty is going to. And I was happy to see it because I wanted Javier to have a chance to get a win. But it was also three to two. And Christian Javier got himself out of some trouble yesterday, too. It could have really turned sideways on him. But Javier pitched himself out of trouble. He had a little tail on his fastball, which was nice to see. A lot of his fastballs were still way up in the zone. Like, he still can't locate it. And it looks like players are – it looks like hitters are – he's got an 81-mile-an-hour sharp breaking pitch, but it looks like players are – I'm, I'm wondering if he's tipping it somehow because they're just not swinging at that wipeout slider he's got. It's just not – he's just not getting swings on that, swing and misses as often as he was last year. So I'm almost wondering if that's a pitch he's tipping. But Dusty clearly wanted him – and this is why players probably love Dusty – Instead of saying, well, third time around, well, he's he's going to hit 100 pitches this inning, you know, and I don't want him to get to 100. You know what Dusty did? He left Christian Javier out there so that he could pick up – so he had a chance to pick up a win. Mm -hmm. And Javier got through the inning, and it was 3-2, to two, and the Astros bullpen did their job. Then the hitters did their job, and everyone did their job. And it ends up 8-2, and Christian Javier picks up his first win since June 3rd. Since June 3rd. First win since yep. June 3rd.